This is another video in my Essential Music Theory for Pianist series, and today we are covering chords. Chords, 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 chords. Yeah! What they are, how we make them, how we identify them, and how you can use this understanding to make taking written sheet music and making it a little bit less intimidating and easier to understand so you can learn the music that you really want to play. You make it sound easy. So why does this matter? Well, music is two things, chords and scales. Why does that matter? Well, I'm so kind of important to get a handle on both of them. This video is covering one of them, the chord aspect. And this is important because if you can see chords in your music, you are reading by pattern and not by note. Imagine reading a book one letter at a time compared to one word at a time, right? So slow. It seems silly, but why is music any different? It is a written language and should be treated as such. And secondly, for those of you that maybe don't want to play classical music, but you would like to just learn the chords from a chart so you can sing along or kind of comp along. I just want to play music. Understanding how these chords are constructed will allow you to play from an internet chart, which is just basically like the words of the song and then the symbols that we use for chords. It's like the most simple form of music, but at the same time, it is the easiest to pick up and do if you have a good understanding of your chord structure. Getting into how to interpret a chart and what textures and all that blah, stuff, we'll do that later. Don't worry about it. But just that first basic step of IDing and understanding chords will make written music in all forms much, much easier to comprehend. So before we can do chord construction, there are a few concepts that you must, must, must be familiar with. Okay, this is all you need to know. And then it's half steps and whole steps and interval construction. I have videos on actually all of these things, so if you need a refresher or this sounds totally new, check that video out. This one will be right here waiting for you when you come back. I'm gonna be waiting here for you, Gilbert. Firstly, what is a chord? What to do, what is it? Well, as we learned in intervals, we can call these dyads because they are two notes. A chord is at least three notes together. So we call these triads, right? Tri is three, add is note, three notes. And chords must be stacked thirds. So we can have as many thirds on top of each other as we want, but for our basic purposes today, we are learning triads. So three notes, two stack thirds on top of each other. Now, just like how our intervals have quality, our triads have qualities as well. It's about quality, okay? And if you remember the qualities of intervals, major, minor, augmented, diminished, and perfect, we actually have the same kinds of triads. Mine is perfect though, that's, that's not a kind of chord. <laughs> but for our four types of triads, we have major, minor, augmented, and diminished. All four are important, but it is just good to note that the majority of music makes major and minor chords, so make sure you have a good handle on how to make these major and minor triads. How do you make it? Which we're gonna go over right now. So before we get into chord building, as I said earlier, it's important to understand those interval concepts. Then let's start with the fundamentals. So remember, major thirds, four half steps, minor thirds, three half steps. You have to be able to count these well and relatively easily so that we can build our triads from these intervals. So the four kinds of chords we have have a unique formula to build them. And this is why I said it's so important that you understand your intervals and the half steps and whole steps because you need that to build your chords. Remember, intervals are the building blocks for our scales and our chords, how we build our music. And if you remember, all chords are stacked thirds. So we use the two different types of thirds to build the four types of triads. So if you take a look at our chart here, we have our major triad, which is a major third and a minor third. We have our minor triad, which is a minor third and then a major third. And then we have our symmetrical triads, right? Because they're the same things on top of each other. So our diminished triad is a minor third and a minor third, and our augmented triad is a major third and a major third. So let's try a few of these chord examples. The first thing that I would have every student do, stack your thirds. 
you got to stack the thirds because that determines the spacing and it allows you to avoid enharmonic mistakes. How do you know something is a D sharp and not an E flat? It's the same pitch, but if you stack your thirds, you can see those chord relationships a lot easier. So first, let's try building an E major triad. So the first thing, let's just start in our treble clef. We're gonna start on that bottom line with an E, and we're just gonna stack our thirds, right? So we got an E, a third of that is a G, and a third of that is a B. Now, we just have to plug in our half-step formulas to determine the accidentals we need to express this triad as a major chord. So from E, to G, let's count our half steps, right? So F, F sharp, G. Oh, well, I need a major third, so I gotta add one more half step. So a half step above G would be a G sharp. And we know it's not an A flat because I already stacked the thirds first, so we know this is a G sharp. Now, I need to finish the triad, a minor third on top. So now we count from our G sharp, to our B. Let's see how many half steps we have there, right? So we go from G sharp, we go to A, A sharp, and B. So G sharp to B is already three half steps, so we don't have to do anything. So our E major chord, E, G sharp, and B. Now let's do the same thing for one of our minor chords. We're gonna start on a little bit of a more difficult pitch. So let's try making an F sharp minor triad. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we write our F sharp down. Why don't we try this one in the bass clef? So we'll do it on the F sharp that goes right on those two dots right there. And we're just gonna stack our thirds on the line above that and the line above that. So we got an F sharp, we got an A, and we got a C. Now we just have to apply our formula to make this a minor triad. So the formula for a minor triad is a minor third and a major third, right? So F sharp, to A, let's count these half steps. F sharp goes to G, it goes to G sharp, and then it goes to A. So we have three half steps between F sharp and A. This is a minor third, so we don't have to do anything yet. Now, let's go from A, and we have to add, what's the next part of our formula? A major third, so we have an A and a C here. So how do we express this A to C as a major third? Well, first, let's count half steps, right? So A to C. So we got an A sharp, a B, and a C. So that's three half steps. So we need four. We gotta get to the black key above C, and we express that as not a D flat, but because we wrote the C, it's a C sharp. So an F sharp minor chord is F sharp, A, and C sharp. All right, now let's try building an F diminished chord on our treble clef. So we're gonna start on that first space. We're going to add a skip and then a skip above that. So we got an F, an A, and a C here. All right, so a diminished triad is two minor thirds. So we need groups of three half steps. So let's go from F to A, count our half steps, see what we got, right? So F, we go up, we get an F sharp, then we got a G, and then we got a G sharp, and then we got an A. So this is four half steps. So we have to decrease the quantity here. So how do we express that A as a half step lower? Well, we just add a flat, right? So we got an A flat. So F to A flat, that's our first third. And now let's check A flat to C. How many half steps is that? Because it has to be three. So A flat to C. We go to an A, we go to a B flat, we go to a B, and then we go to C. So this is four half steps to C. So we have to express this note as three half steps instead. So it's not a C, but we would write a C flat. So that makes it three half steps. And students are like, why don't they just use a B? Why do they have to use a C flat? It's so confusing. Well, I just showed you why. Because chords are stacked thirds. So that's why some of those enharmonic relationships come into play. So our F diminished triad is F, A flat, and C flat. All right, let's build our fourth kind of triad, our augmented chord. We'll do this on the bass clef. Why don't we do, mm, let's do a D augmented. Let's do D. So we're gonna start on that third line of our bass clef. What do we do? We stack our thirds, right? So we got a D, an F, and an A. Now we just have to make sure that the distance between all of our notes are four half steps, two major thirds. So D to F, let's count that. So we have 
E flat, E, F. Well, it's three, so now we have to make it four. So we change that F to an F sharp. So that gives us four half steps. We have D to F sharp. Now let's count F sharp to A. So F sharp, starting on that first note, we go to G, then we go to G sharp, and then we go to A. Well, that's three half steps, so we have to make it four. So we just add the sharp next to A. So then we get A sharp. So D augmented is D, F sharp, and A sharp. Now, you need to be able to do this in reverse. It's very important in sheet music that you can ID the chords in the music that you're looking at. So it's important to note that, I mean, sometimes it does happen where the notes are like in a closed position and you're like, that's a C major chord because it's like C, E, and G and it's right there and they're right next to each other. But music does not work like this all the time. Very often, the notes are spaced out across the staves horizontally and vertically. So you need to be able to visualize the music compacting into one chord. Secondly, you wanna look at the relationship between the staves, both hands, because so often you have common tones between the hands. So students will get stuck like reading the bass clef and then the treble clef and it's like, dude, this is one chord. There's literally three notes in this whole bar. I mean, yeah, they, it happens a lot and they're here and there and all, but it's three notes. It's one chord. So do your best to see the repeating, the common tone relationship between staves. All right, so let's do a quick recap. Rewind, please. Rewind the tape. So a chord, also known as a triad, is three notes in stacked thirds. They must be intervals of thirds. There are four types of triads. There are always four. Major, minor, augmented, and diminished, and all four use a different combination of major and minor thirds to be constructed. Next, you want to memorize those construction formulas. How are we gonna memorize all this? As best as possible, and ID the chords within your music as much as you can. So not only just writing them out on the page, writing them on the music, but also hearing and listening to the chords and forming a direct association with the sound and the name. Gotta learn to listen, Lou. So when I first teach this to kids for their oral skills, we don't, actually don't use these names. Like the major chord is the happy chord, right? Cause you know, it's so happy. Happy, 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 happy. And you know, minor chord, sad chord. I'm so sad. And then our augmented chord, I call it the space chord cause it sounds like you're going in space. You're like kind of just floating. Floating forever in space. Power. And then the diminished triad is our scary chord, you know? Because it sounds like, oh my gosh, something scary is gonna happen, right? Oh, it's so scary! But forming these associations make it easier to hear when you're making mistakes in your sheet music. So all these skills will kind of come together. And lastly, don't forget in your written music, chords don't appear always in that, you know, easy to identify shape. They are often spaced out horizontally and vertically across the staves. But if you are looking for your common tones between the hands and you can see those triad relationships, it's gonna make understanding what the heck is happening in your music a lot easier. What, what the devil is going on? All right, that is my video on chords and chord construction. I really hope it was helpful. Definitely get some practice on identifying and constructing the four types of triads that we have. As always, drop a like, a comment, let me know any tips and tricks that you use for identifying chords in your own music. And if you appreciate the content, definitely check out www.thepowerfulpiano.com. We always have some good merch for you, so if you wanna look good and support us at the same time, you know where the link is. As always, keep practicing. You'll get there, I promise you will. Stay powerful, y'all.